Good morning, you guys. Welcome back to my channel. It is Sunday, the 27th of December, and I have been indoors for two and a half days because just before Christmas, the government announced that Oxfordshire would go into tier four lockdown. And so on Christmas Eve, I went and I did a whole sweep and I made sure I had like lots of supplies, but I have to go outside to put my garbage and recycling in the garbage and recycling room. And I have to mail a letter, which is important because it's like a utilities letter for like people who just moved into a new place. So I have to do that before tomorrow, before they collect the mail. And then I thought I would go for like one permissible walk in the university parks. You're still allowed to do exercise and to walk around on your own or with your bubble, or you can meet one other person and walk around. But I'm just gonna go and do like a quick loop in the university parks, which is one of my favorite parks here in Oxford. So just to like get outside and get some fresh air and get my steps in. This morning I did a little home workout, which is like not my favorite, but it does make me feel so much better. And it does like keep me in check. And, and it just gets, it like sets me on the right path in the morning because I haven't been able, I haven't been able to join a gym yet here in Oxford. And anyway, the gyms are all closed now in tier four. So I've done something, but then I also realized when I was putting on my leggings this morning that I definitely, you know, over the past few days, because I haven't been working out and I haven't really been like watching what I eat this week because it's the holiday, right? Um, I do feel like my clothes are a bit tighter. And so I just want to make sure that I'm keeping myself like even keeled and balanced and sort of in check. So I get through this week and get through the holiday um, feeling good and feeling okay about my health and what I'm doing and that I'm not sliding backwards in this lockdown because I'm just, you know, I've just moved to a new country and my entire schedule is upside down. Anyway, I thought I would take you guys with me. I also have to go to the supermarket. Supermarkets are open, so um, I think you can go shopping on your own, which is totally fine because that's what I do anyway. So I'm gonna go and buy some toilet paper and some Kleenex, which I ran out of, which is, bad planning on my part, but yeah, it's a beautiful day outside. Yesterday it was raining most of the day, so I'm really glad that it's beautiful outside. I'm going to like, I'm gonna like really relish and just being outdoors for about an hour and I'll come back and maybe give you a little bit of a pantry and fridge tour because I can show you what I've, how I've prepared for this tier four lockdown. I am wearing, this new winter coat that I got. I moved here without any real winter clothes. Like I had warm clothes, like hoodies and stuff, but I didn't have any sweaters. So the other day I actually, cause Marks and Spencer opens at 7 a.m. here before the holidays. So when I was doing my last minute lockdown prep shop, I also just like, I walked by like a whole rack of sweaters in Marks and Spencer. So I bought a bunch of sweaters the other day, right before lockdown started. And this I ordered from Lululemon. I've had Lululemon coats before and actually all of my winter coats and all of my winter gear and all my boots and everything, all my warm clothes are all in New York, but I obviously have not had a chance to go back to my New York apartment and get all my winter stuff. I never brought it to Hong Kong because it doesn't really get that cold in Hong Kong. I feel like, Probably this past year in January or February, it may have gotten down to like 48 degrees Fahrenheit one day. And I think it may have worn like a puffy jacket with a fleece like one day, but generally I didn't need it. So I never brought it with me because it's so bulky. And so when I got here, I was completely unprepared. It was almost freezing yesterday. And today it's pretty cold outside, but it's sunny. Anyway, so I bought this coat, which, I, which I'm like obsessed with. I'll link it down in the description box below. I'm a huge fan of Lululemon winter coats. I find them to be so warm and I love that they are waterproof. Like the first time I had a waterproof Lululemon jacket was, I don't know, like years and years and years and years ago. And I remember it was so light and didn't feel like that crunchy waterproof fabric. So I wasn't convinced that it was waterproof, but I did wear it out one day and it just started to rain. And literally the waters like beat it up on top of the fabric and fell off. It was, it was like magic to me. 
Anyway, I'm easily amused. Okay, so let's go out. I'm gonna show you a little bit of Oxford today. I don't know how many people are gonna be out and um, I'm trying to take this lockdown pretty seriously. So I'm not gonna go out every single day, but I do feel like after two and a half days being completely indoors, I need to just get a little bit of fresh air and walk around and just, just be outside for a minute. And also I need to buy Kleenex, so important, important things. Okay, let's go. University parks. It looks like it's closed because there were really high winds yesterday. Um, so I'm gonna just do a loop on the outside and head home or the supermarket. I'm standing um, right by Keeble College here, which is beautiful. There are so many runners out, which is actually really nice. And actually some kids running with their parents, which is really cute. In other news, it was a really bad idea to wear white trainers when it's still muddy outside. I hope I can wash these. back home. Turns out I just went out way too early and even though essential stores are allowed to open today, they aren't open yet because it's Sunday and it's, it's like 10 a.m. So um, everything opens around 11. I may go out a little bit later. I felt okay being out there. It was very empty on the streets. I think because the city is a college town and so most like there are no tourists obviously here right now and the students have all gone home. They went home weeks and weeks ago. So it's just people who live here locally. And if most people are staying home anyway because of the lockdown and on top of that, it's Sunday. It's, um, it's just, it's, I, feel, I feel like it's okay to be outside for not too long and obviously not to be indoors too much. There are some like convenience stores that are open, but I really wanted to go to a supermarket and just like get everything done in one go. So I came back and I thought I would do a little lockdown grocery haul or not, not really a haul, but just to show you what I stocked up on right before lockdown. I actually filmed this with my other camera. So it's gonna look a little different than this. This is, I'm just shooting this on my phone. And um, so yeah. So here it is. Here's what I stocked my fridge, freezer, and cupboards with right before lockdown. Welcome to my refrigerator. Now I didn't really do a clean up here. So there is some stuff in here that I probably not suitable for a public consumption, <laughs> but I really stocked up a lot on Greek yogurt ahead of the lockdown, I find that I go through a lot of Greek yogurt. You can make a lot of things with it, including dressings, and I eat it sometimes just with blueberries or back here with some protein powder. There's some BCAAs back there. I don't know why I put it in the fridge. I just did, I think, as I run out of counter and cabinet space. So I have, I got some citrus, some grapefruit, because grapefruit doesn't go bad as quickly, especially when you put it in the fridge, and I love cold grapefruit. Again, more Greek yogurt. This is one of my favorite kinds. This is the Marks and Spencer authentic Greek yogurt, the 0% fat one, because it really is rich and creamy. 
I got one of these stir fry mixes here, which is just mixed vegetables, including broccolini that you can put in soups or in stir fries. Back here are some Spanish olives. I love this. This is something that you can buy at Marks and Spencer all year round. It's um, de-seeded pomegranates. So they're already out of the pomegranate, which is great. Although I do love pomegranates. So I also bought a pomegranate. I love sitting in front of the television and cracking into a big cold pomegranate and like slowly gnawing my way through it, through a good film. Also here is a mackerel, smoked mackerel fillet that I came in a package and I ate one of them already. There's the other one. I like to eat that with eggs or just on its own with breakfast for on like toast or something. I have a bunch of eggs. I bought pancetta, two different kinds. One is a smoked, I think one is a smoked pancetta and one is a non-smoked pancetta. This keeps for a long time. I think this doesn't expire until January of next year. I also found the Chinese supermarket in town because I wanted to buy large pre-cut garlic and ginger because it makes cooking so easy. And I got some grated cheddar cheese just in case I wanna make some mac and cheese under lockdown. Here I got two giant bags of organic spinach. And I like to have chicken thigh fillets on hand. These are good until the 28th. And usually, and this is what I've done here with kale and chicken, doesn't look very nice, but they, these are sort of leftovers. Sometimes if I buy fresh chicken and I'm not able to use it in time or I'm worried I'm not able to use it in time, I will either freeze it, you'll see that in my freezer, or I will cook it and portion it and then maybe freeze it or just cook it and put it in the fridge if I know I'm gonna eat it in the next few days. But that's a good way for me to make sure I have lean proteins. I mean, thighs aren't like the leanest protein, but breasts, I, I can't eat any more chicken breasts. It's too depressing to me. But um, chicken thigh fillets, I feel like are a good medium in between delicious like drumsticks and dark meat and like wings and stuff and a breast and it's a very, very versatile cut of the chicken that cooks very quickly. This is something I cooked yesterday that you can't even tell what it is. It is ground beef with mushrooms and peppers that um, I ate with a salad yesterday, but then you can also put with pasta if you add a little bit of tomato sauce. Back here, we've got some radishes, which may or may not already be expired. They are best by the 22nd, but I suspect these are fine radishes. They're pretty sturdy little vegetables. Here's my pomegranate. And here's some leftover flat leaf parsley that I can put on the beef. It gives it a fresh taste. Here in my crisper, I have a bunch of bagged vegetables, which I think I have basically until the end of the week to eat. So here are some pea shoots. Here's some pea shoots. I also have lots of pea shoots because I love pea shoots. I also have a mixed green salad and broccoli. And then here in this drawer, I have more flat leaf parsley back there, as well as like spring onions, which they call salad onions here, green beans, and another head of broccoli. On my fridge door, I have got some single cream, which I used for pasta, um, pasta with butter, this is butter, butter, single cream, I like a little bit of nutmeg, it's very, very good. I put my popcorn in here because I didn't have another container to put it in. It doesn't need to go in the fridge, obviously. Here, oh, this is fun. I found these high protein M&M &M bars. It, the problem is it's not low in sugar, it's just higher in protein, but it still has the sugar. So I got them to try and I haven't tried them yet. So this is the peanut version and the regular version. I love these traditional pickled onions in England, so I gotta have a jar of those. I have some goji berries. I'm having the hardest time in England finding chip clips or 
I don't know what they're called here. I've tried to look at look, find them on Amazon too. Um, they're just the clips to keep packages closed. I need to get some of those. That's why I'm sort of keeping everything in the fridge because I feel like at least in the fridge it's not exposed in like the open. This is milled chia seeds and these are sprouted flax seeds. These are for my overnight oats. Here's another small container of cut garlic that I got, which I quickly realized was way too small. And that's why I bought the Chinese supermarket ones, which are much bigger. I picked up a bunch of almond milk here. These are the innocent dairy-free ones. I like the almond milk that doesn't have the preservatives and the emulsifiers in it. So this one, I think only the only ingredients are almonds, water, plant fiber, and some sea salt. Oh, this is great. Okay, so I have some chopped almonds here, a bar of Cadbury dairy milk, fruit and nut, fruit and nut version here. Fruit and nut, delicious, my favorite. And last night on Christmas, I made myself a big bowl of spaghetti with Marmite. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Marmite on toast, but I do love Marmite in cooking, so Marmite in spaghetti with a little butter is chef's kiss so good more almond milk i found this here and i haven't seen this anywhere outside of spain so tiger nut drink um if you've been to spain specifically barcelona and have had horchata there they make their horchata out of tiger nut and they call it chufa in spain and i love it the flavor is so good and apparently it's really good for your central nervous system I don't know about the science of that, but I do love it. And I make my overnight oats with chufa because I love the richness of that nut flavor. I think it's so delicious. And actually I prefer it to almond milk, although I do like almond milk in my coffee more. I have some cow's milk, organic cow's milk. I buy it in these small containers just so they don't go bad as quickly. And here's more tiger nut milk. This I found, there's a store jet that just opened here in Oxford called Fit Cookie, and they have a ton of health food stuff. And liquid egg whites is actually really hard to find like this outside of the US. So I'm so happy to see that they have it. So I bought two big ones. These are great for breakfast, for omelets. I put this sometimes in my oatmeal to make it creamier if you mix egg whites into your oatmeal. And they're just such a good all-purpose giant bottle of egg whites. Apple cider vinegar. I have some orange chocolate from galaxy galaxy chocolate is so delicious also and i also have i also picked up some licorice and i, I actually love licorice so much i don't know licorice is one of those controversial things that if you either love it or hate it but i love it here is some parmesan that's pre-grated i bought this just yesterday at the local tesco i put this on my marmite pasta and a semi-skimmed organic milk now onto my freezer and my freezer here is actually not very big and it's all drawers which is similar to the style i have in new york it's not my favorite arrangement because it doesn't hold as much i think versus like a one big cabinet where you can just like shove things in there but this is pretty good i think so here i've put what i did the other day so i got some this is you can't even tell what these things are so this is a cherry madeira cake that i bought and then I only wanted one small slice, so then I sliced the rest of it up, up and I froze it. And I can just toast that or put it in the microwave afterwards. This is a walnut cake that I did the same thing too. I just wanted like a bite. And this also prevents me from eating the whole thing at once. If I cut a slice for myself and then immediately cut, slice the rest of it and then freeze it. So I can't eat it right away, but it also doesn't waste it because I can save it for a later date. And it's already portioned out so I can just take one piece and then toast it or put it in the microwave for when I want to eat it next. And this, I picked up a bunch of organic meats the other day, right before lockdown started, and I pre-froze them, so I just put them in freezer bags, squeeze the air out, and put them in freeze here just in case I wasn't able to go to the store again for a little while. I wanted to make sure I had proteins here that I could eat and that I wouldn't like, you know, I wouldn't, just having things pre prevents me from just, eat, you know, ordering Deliveroo and getting a pizza and eating the whole thing. In my second drawer here, I bought some frozen salmon fillets. 
Um, it's really important to make sure that your salmon comes from responsible sources and sustainable sources. So that was important to me to get. So I got those. Then I got some frozen vegetables, just in case I couldn't get out to get more vegetables. So just the standard cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots. I bought this at the Chinese supermarket and I immediately froze it. It's turnip cake. And if I ever like crave like a dim sum thing, it's usually this. And so I, it's already pre-made. You can just pop it in the oven or pop it in the microwave to heat it up. I also bought tons of frozen dumplings. You'll see here and the drawer below. I have frozen dumplings. And I always have frozen garden peas wherever wherever you find me. If I have a freezer, I have frozen garden peas. I find them to be so versatile and useful and you can put them in so many different things. In the last drawer here, I bought, this is a hard drawer to I'm gonna take it out, but I bought some frozen meats that are pre-sliced. So these meats are actually for hot pot, but I bought them just in case I don't know why, I bought a lot of things just in case. So I got lamb slices, and then I got two trays of beef slices. These are just really good for soups and for stir fries. As soon as you defrost them in the microwave, they're good to go. More dumplings, I ate half a pack of these pork and coriander dumplings yesterday. I have three delicacies, pork dumplings and British broad beans. So here, this is the main cabinet where I keep things that don't need to be refrigerated. Up here, we have got no added sugar Heinz beans. I love beans, <laughs> the British baked beans. And I always buy the ones that have no added sugar. These are kind of hard to find outside of the UK. I have been playing around with gluten-free pastas because I love pastas, but and I'm not gluten intolerant, but I am wondering if gluten is causing me a little bit of inflammation in my joints in my old age. So I've been trying gluten-free pastas from Sainsbury's and Marks and Spencer. This one I haven't tried yet. I did try one from Marks and Spencer the other day that I really, really liked. So, so far so good. Here's another gluten-free spaghetti. This is made of corn. I don't know why it's so orange. And I also have some more sliced almonds. Manuka honey, I, I've i been having a lot of this, mostly because it was on sale at Holland & Barrett, which is a health food store here. So it was buy one, get one for one pound. So it's basically two for one, and usually it's so expensive. So I bought a few of these in 70 and 55. The higher the number, the more antibacterial properties it has. I have some brown rice. I have some brown rice. Originally, I was going to eat this with my beef stew, and I still might because I still have a bunch of lean beef in the freezer. And there is more gluten-free pasta up there. I believe that that is macaroni shape. And this is so important. This is lao gan ma. It's a very famous chili crisp sauce from China, and it is delicious. It is like a chili, garlic oily sauce and it goes so good with so many things from eggs to stir fries to noodles if you see this and you like spicy garlicky things i would recommend picking one up and experimenting with it in your kitchen here on the second shelf i have more manuka honey i have a plastic bag full of my Four Sigmatic coffees that I moved from Hong Kong, that I moved to Hong Kong from the US. Um, Four Sigmatic is my favorite sort of like body hacking. I don't know what it is. It's like coffee, but it has mushroom additives that help you focus and also make sure you don't get jittery from coffee. I picked up some baking powder and baking soda. Mostly I picked up baking powder because I wanna try making those whey protein brownies things in a mug that you see all over like fitness influencer YouTubes. Um, but I think it's just whey powder, baking powder, like I think maybe some oil or something and an, I don't know, and an egg, who knows? I have to look at the recipe. But I needed baking powder so I thought I would try that because the whey powder in my fridge is actually Maltesers flavored whey powder, so I thought that would be delicious. I always like to have certain kinds of spices and sauces with me, and I saw this at the Chinese supermarket. It's Korean, it's gochujang, which is 
a Korean red pepper paste and I thought I should get one just in case because I love the flavor of this. It goes so well in soups and just cooked dishes and with meats. It's so delicious and I thought I should have this as a pantry staple. I also always keep some shin ramen in the back here of every cabinet just in a pinch in case I want that sort of like spicy instant noodle flavor. It's such a good instant noodle and if you add an egg to it and spring onions, it's extra delicious. Some sesame oil, which is very useful. I use it a lot in soups and in noodles. Some balsamic vinegar in case I want it for salads. This is Taiwanese black vinegar. This is my favorite black vinegar. I put this in dipping sauces and sometimes I will cook with it and I'll put it in noodles and soups. Here's a custard creams that I stress bought yesterday at Tesco. I have soy sauce. I have Oyster sauce, which to be honest, I don't really know why I bought this. I hardly ever use oyster sauce, but I love the bottle so much. It's from Hong Kong, it's from Lee Kong Ki. And rice vinegar, which is very, very useful for Asian noodles and recipes and things like that in soups. I bought some chai tea bags and here are just standard chopped tomatoes that I bought at Sainsbury's and um, these are just so good to have on hand all the time. On my bottom shelf here, this is probably the shelf that I go to the most and you'll see why, because it has my coffee and teas on it. So in the front here, this is obviously ketchup. I like the Heinz, I like all kinds of Heinz ketchup, but I, when I buy it at the supermarket and keep it at home, I like to buy the one that has no added sugar and salt. Sometimes if I wind up cooking with ketchup or using it, it's usually on food that is already salty and if it's in a dish, then I, will like, and then I would like to control the sugar and salt content myself. Here is my organic agave syrup. I will use this in the place of sugar, although I do also have sugar here. And I don't really use sugar in my coffee and tea. I prefer to use agave or manuka honey. I picked this up the other day on my like last minute pre-Christmas um, grocery run because my friend in Hong Kong told me that this existed. I don't really know what I'm going to do with Marmite peanut butter, but I will try it at some point and um, I'm not sure I'm going to super love it. I don't really love Marmite as a spread, but this sounds intriguing and savory. I've got some coarse sea salt. This is usually, I usually use this just in like pasta water and in cooking. Some Darjeeling tea bags. I drink Darjeeling in the afternoons. Some smooth peanut butter. I, I love peanut butter. I put peanut butter a lot of times in my oatmeal and I also use it to make a sauce for noodles. Here is my canister of sugar. I usually actually just keep sugar around for the odd cooking thing. Um, especially when you have tinned tomatoes, putting a teaspoon of sugar into a recipe that also uses tinned tomatoes does help cut some of that like tinny flavor out of the tinned tomatoes, if that makes any sense. The standard spices, basil, crushed chilies, ground nutmeg, which is great, like I said, with cream and butter on a pasta, just like a little nutmeg is makes it so good. This I bought on a whim because I had seen a lot of, of of talk about it. I read a lot about La Chinara. I've never actually bought it before. I think I may be a little bit, bit intolerant of paprika because I, the last few times I ate this, I sort of got like a rash on my arms right afterwards and I don't think anything else I ate that day was different. So I'm sort of gonna hold off on using that again. Oregano, bay leaves, um, beef bouillon cubes and black peppercorns. My preferred coffee brand is Ely. I put this in my Bialetti. This is pre-ground. I just don't, can't be bothered to like grind my own coffee in the morning. Although I know it's probably it tastes fresher if you grind your own coffee, but I always have a couple of those on hand. And my preferred everyday tea is Yorkshire tea. So I love that. I always have that on hand. Last cabinet I want to show you guys. This is like this weird space. This is above like the extractor fan. So up here I keep a lot of like non-carb carbs. And these are all shirataki konjac noodles. I don't know um, if you've ever tried these before, but these are made 
of a Japanese sea vegetable and they look like well this one is the rice style which I actually this is my favorite kind so it's zero carb almost zero calorie rice shaped things that have like a real mouthfeel there's like a real like chew to them so it's not just like ordinary vermicelli like cut into rice shape but I will eat this if I am dieting and I am trying to cut down on my carb intake and keep my carbs low. So I have a bunch of these. These also come in a penne shape. So I bought these at Holland and Barrett here and I've never tried this brand before. So I was curious to try these. So but you see zero carbs, gluten-free, organic, wheat-free, fat-free, and sugar-free. I will say that the texture is not for everyone. Um, some people think they're a little bit like slimy. I wouldn't say they were slimy. I think they're just like not a classic noodle texture. They also come, I bought the fettuccine shape. Then here I got uh, another rice one just to try this brand and what the rice one is like from that brand. And just skinny noodle ones. And spaghetti style ones and then and then I also the other day I bought these at Holland and Barrett so these are mung bean and edamame noodles and these are actually so good it's so delicious they're from a brand called Explore Cuisine and they're green and they're organic and they, I wouldn't say they were super low carb one serving has 11.3 grams of carbs and 6 grams of sugar but and it's really high in protein, has 42 grams of protein per serving, which is half a box. And I really liked it. I didn't feel like it had a weird taste. I felt like the texture was really good. Sometimes the thing with these um, pasta substitutes is that the texture is really weird. So I got that in fettuccine and I also bought the spaghetti shape. So that's it. That's the vlog for today. Not too exciting and I'm not sure I'll be vlogging in like a daily vlog format at all for the next few weeks because there's not anything to really do. Um, I am off of work for the next week until right after the new year and then I'm back to work, but I'm back to work online because I'm working remotely now and I'm excited to get back into a work schedule. I. I actually really enjoy work. I really love my job and I really love the industry I'm in. So I'm actually looking forward to getting back into it and being creative and creating content professionally, like for, you know, a media platform. But I know it sounds weird, doesn't it? It is really good for me to have this kind of long vacation of three or four, three and a half weeks. It's probably one of the longest vacations I've ever taken in my professional career and definitely the longest vacation I took this year. This year, I barely took any days off. I took a couple of days off here and there and I think I took a week off, but that was like attached to a long weekend or, or something like that. And I, and I feel like just never turning your brain or never separating yourself from your professional life or your like official full-time job life is not great for, it was not great for me. So I really did need these few weeks and really I think the change of scenery will do wonders for my outlook and for my creativity and for my, for my productivity and for my quality of work. This is one of the biggest things I thought for so long, for months and months and months, I thought about this, about this big change. And obviously this is a huge change to be working with a remote team. Um, and for me to be remote, anyway, it's a whole experiment, but <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be fine because this is, this is the way the world is now. And I think there's something here about, 2021 for me, I think is going to shape up to be a year where I learn about self-discipline and structure. I have always relied on external frameworks for structure, for, you know, for the going to an office, the workday, 
going to school, having deadlines set by other people, and the thing that I've always wanted to develop, and the thing I struggle with the most in my personal goal setting, for example, fitness, weight loss, health, is setting my own parameters and really it's self it's self discipline and willpower everything that has happened in the past year year and a half for me and my life and in the world i feel like it's such an important skill to develop and i have all the tools now i feel like i have an arsenal of tools and i have this whole toolbox that i've learned from going to ultimate performance in hong kong for a year and a half and learning from two really great trainers and then managing a team both in Hong Kong and all over Asia. And now it's my turn to put myself in a situation where I can thrive, but also establish my own frameworks and ways of working and workflow and just create a sense of discipline for myself. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's definitely a concept and a work in progress and I'm sure there will be pitfalls and stumbles along the way but I will probably share them here on this YouTube channel. Anyway thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and hopefully I'll be back soon with more. See you next time.